Judy, it's great to have you on the show today. And maybe just a quick check on the market, your thoughts on the, how the market has, has started the quarter. Of course, we know that it had a very strong rally in the third quarter. Yes, uh, uh, thank you very much. Well, I believe that the rally would uh, continue towards the last quarter of the year. But I think that most companies have performed very well from the first quarter to the second quarter, and indeed the third quarter, especially the banking uh, industry. I think most of them will ramp up their performance in the last quarter of the year, ending December 31st. I know you're focused on um, SME, so give us a perspective on the impact of falling inflation on the SME space in your view. Of course, August inflation was down to 11.7%. There's a view that they are likely to trade trend lower and, of course, move closer to 10%. Your thoughts on how the falling inflation is impacting SMEs in Nigeria today? Yeah, thank you very much. As you know, I think the Central Bank of Nigeria handling the monetary policy uh, uh, mechanism of the country is targeting single-digit inflation uh, for the country. And uh, we believe that this price stability will help MSMEs, especially in the areas of planning, will also improve on their real return on investment because what has happened over time with very high inflation is that real return has dropped right. with uh, runaway inflation. So I think that when that happens, people are better positioned to plan and indeed whatever it is that they generate in terms of returns are stable and real. But at this stage, are we seeing any significant impact? I know it's still early days. Um, inflation is still fairly high at 11.7%, but of course it's trending lower over the last few, um, last few months. Your thoughts on um, the, or rather, you, can you give us a, an update on how SMEs are, are feeling the improvement in inflation right now? Yes, it may be very difficult at this stage to say, like you said, these are early days, but if you look at where we are coming from, where inflation at the beginning of the year was around 13 14%, and it dropped into about 11.7%, and we believe maybe the next one or two months it may drop to about 10%, I think by and large the MSME sector has benefited a lot from that. In terms of the purchasing price of their inputs, Okay, prices have remained stable and the, uh, the runaway uh, inflation has not eroded whatever it is that they, uh, they have gains or profits that they are making. Okay, and of course one thing that's certainly going to be positive for um, SMEs is the improvement in the power sector. And I want to get your thoughts on, on that. And of course the opportunity that it opens up for SMEs in general. We did see a telecom boom in the late 2000s, uh, rather in, the, in early 2000, 2001. We've seen the impact of that boom create a lot of um, small businesses across the country. Do you anticipate a similar trend once we get this power sector going? Absolutely. There, there are two dimensions to it. The first dimension is the downstream effect of the privatization of the power sector, really the generating and distribution sector. Like you observed in the telecom sector, you find there will be this trickle down effect in terms of those that will act as bulk breakers for these generating uh, companies and distribution companies. Of course, that will lead to empowering of certain small and medium scale enterprises in the country. The second dimension is when it comes to steady power supply, because we believe that if power goes into the hands of the private sector, it will be in their best interest to make sure that the electricity supply is stable, because that's the only way they're going to make money. And if the electricity supply is stable, of course, you know the cost of generating energy will also drop like stone uh, from the sky, because in fact, buying diesel or buying petrol to generate uh, power for MSMEs contributes up to 30% of their cost as we speak currently. Right. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, what are the opportunities for banks, for instance, um, like Diamond Bank, I know you're very SME focused. Um, how are you positioning yourself ahead of this um, expected reform? Absolutely. What we have done is uh, the lessons we learned from the telcos uh, when it was privatized. What we are doing currently is that most of the companies that are bidding uh, for the power generating uh, companies, those that are also bidding for the distribution companies, Diamond Bank is behind most of them. We are trying to support them. Of course, the spin-off effect that will come from that will involve, entail that most of the companies that work with them will also have to do business with Diamond Bank. So we are very well positioned to tap into the opportunities that will arise from that. All right, and then what about for the consumers? I mean, beyond SMEs, um, clearly if we get these power companies running as they should, clearly they're going to employ a lot more people. That may um, open up new opportunities for uh, consumer finance. A absolutely, absolutely. So. If, if, if a lot more people are employed, of course, that means that the purchasing power will increase and, of course, we're able to lend money to these people. So I think it's a real harvest and opportunity for retail banking if that does happen, as it happened in the telecom sector. I haven't seen any, um, any research on this, but do you by any chance have an estimate of how many jobs the power sector is expected to either directly or indirectly create? I don't know if you have a number on that. No, I don't have a number. I can give you an estimate. Like I said, there are various dimensions to it. First of all, a lot of the artisans you see depend a lot on power to drive their business. Right. Now, 
Of course, if power becomes very stable and they stop using high cost energy to generate uh, their power, of course, employment will increase. So I, I think that in terms of percentage, you might see a notch increase in terms of people that are employed by about 2 to 3 percent. But where it is more critical as we speak is actually the spin-off effects in terms of employment. All these bulk breakers, small firms that may be selling the uh, um, uh, recharge cards, as we call it, for these distribution companies will also employ so many people. I think in terms of employment, we are looking at employing no less than 200,000 people in the first phase of this privatization in Nigeria at the retail end. Well, those certainly sound like very interesting numbers. Thank you, Jude, for joining us on the show today. We look forward to speaking to you again sometime soon. Jude Anele is head of retail banking at Diamond Bank.